Hello, welcome back. We are on our last step to run the pipeline, the shell script, which is a bit longer than the other two, the sample sheet and the nextload.config file. But these, this is the last input file we need. Um, it's gonna be a shell script actually. And then I'm gonna make a short little video after this one to actually run it, because it's such an exciting time uh, to see it actually run and how to organize the folder and track the progress. But this is the last of what we need to start running this. And so I'm going to go through it. It's all written down here with instructions and extra links um, here. So I'll go through it kind of fast, but we're on the class in lessons. We are on 04. Um, and the third file here is the shell script. Um, and so there's some um, background on what a shell script is. And it's basically just a list of instructions. Um, so it can, you're making a file that when you type on the terminal, you're typing a command, but you can make a file with a bunch of different commands and the computer will go through it one at a time. It can also do multiple languages in one um, shell script. Um, you will have to make it executable. We'll do that at the end. Um, but uh, so I'm going to go through it line by line and then I have it um, pasted here on the bottom of the screen. This is what it looks like. I'm gonna just go through it line by line as the text I've written above, but then at the bottom, if you wanna copy and paste it um, and use Nano and put it in the folder you're gonna run the pipeline in, you'll be all set. Um, okay, so what's all in here? Well, let's look at that. So the first thing and most important thing is this thing called a shebang. Um, that's at the top of the file and um, it's basically saying use bash at this point and sbatch is um, a command to run things on in slurm that's the language we talked about in the next flow config that fiji's running um, and so sbatch is going to send us to the long queue um, uh, we also discussed that a little bit but this is going to take over eight hours and so we don't want to use up a bunch of other people's jobs that need to do something fast and quick so we're going to move this to the long queue we're just telling fiji that using Slurm as a language. And again, we're just making a file with a bunch of instructions in a row. And then we're gonna give it a job name with this sbatch flag double um, dash job name equals and then call it something. You do wanna change this every time you do a different project um, so you can keep track of uh, this sheet tells you exactly what was um, run and when. Um, and then you can also have uh, the computer email you and so mail type equals end or fail so if the project ends and you're done it'll send you an email and if it fails it'll send you an email so if it says exit status zero you're good it says exit status one not so good um, or vice versa sorry <laughs> it's the other way um, so uh, then yeah so you put in you need to put in your email name here um, and then this is, this is an interesting one here uh, where on a supercomputer you have multiple computers that are sort of connected, but um, you can think of a node as like a laptop and you're saying here, I want to check out one node, the node equals one. There's many nodes on Fiji and most supercomputers. You could check out more than one, but that's like using two different laptops and saying I, I need them to talk to each other while running the same job, you would never do that. You'd only use your one laptop. So it is doable. We're not gonna get into it too much, um, but uh, we're just gonna use one node, which is plenty for this job. Same thing with the tasks. If we did check out more than one node, we would have to have multiple tasks going across them. Uh, we don't wanna do that. So um, then we're gonna tell Fiji we need six gigabytes of memory. Um, to do this, which is really nothing. We could probably turn this up, um, but it works fine um, for these purposes. And then this one's really important is this thing time equals, um, and that's the wall clock. And that's basically saying, I think this job's gonna take 10 hours. Now I mentioned it might be only eight hours. And so you wanna lean on, it's give it a little more time, but you don't wanna put in like 100 hours because after it's finished running, it's not going to allow somebody else to check out that node. And you want to be, do best practices and be a good citizen on the server 
and really try and optimize this. Now, the first time you run it, you might want to give it a little more leeway and then scale it back after you've seen how long it takes to run, which I've already run this, so it's about eight hours. But it can change. <laughs> Things can happen and it can be different. The nice thing is uh, we're going to see a resume flag, so if anything does go wrong, you can just pick right back up where you left off. Um, we're going to make a file to keep track of this, so we're just saying make an output file and call it nextflow.out. Then we can use uh, tail and follow it and see where in um, the process it is. And also for errors, so we're going to make an error file. So chances are good you're going to have an error, and then you can cat this file, and it'll tell you where um, the pipeline stopped. If you didn't have these, you'd be running blind and you would just see a prompt sitting there and you would have no idea what's actually running. So this is giving us an sort of inside scoop on um, what's happening and where. And this is just some basic bash command saying where am I, what's the, uh, what node am I on, and what's the date. These are just kind of nice uh, bookmarking um, things to do so that you can know when, where, and how you ran it. This echo is silly, you don't need it, but I like to see it so that I know it's running, it's run through all the bash commands, or slurm, and is getting to this next half, which is all in next flow. And so this is just saying, hey, you've made it through all the slurm instructions, we're moving on in this sheet. And so then we're gonna do module load. We've done this with Java, where we do module load, it's sort of setting the environment to load a package. And in this case, we're gonna load the container that's gonna that NF Core is going to download all the software into. And there's two types of containers. There's Singularity and Docker. Um, Docker is free but less secure. And because we're at a university, we want to use a more secure um, container, and that's Singularity. Um, but it does cost money. So um, if you're at home doing this on your laptop, use Docker. It's just fine. Um, and so Singularity is going to load. Um, and say, here's an empty container, go ahead, next flow, fill it up with all the steps you need to do RNA-seq. And that's this step here, where it's like next flow run NF core. So it's going to go to that GitHub, and it's going to go into the RNA-seq directory and take out version 3.14.0. Awesome, that's all it is. That's it. All this software is going to get installed into this container with that one line of command. And then we add this resume flag, which is the best, because if your job fails, NextFlow is like keeping track of its progress and making um, folders for you so that if something goes wrong and you rerun it, it'll just pick right back up where it left off. And that's awesome addition to this. Um, now we're telling NextFlow, remember NextFlow speaks all these languages. We're saying, hey, we put it in a singularity container so when you go to fill it, it's a singularity container. Docker, you would also specify here um, what type of container you're using, basically. Um, and then the, the actual pipeline needs um, these input files, as we mentioned. Um, this is an old one that called design.csv. This is the same as sample sheet.csv. Um, every time next a new version of the pipeline comes in, they get a little bit different naming. But this is just saying, here's where that sample sheet has the sample name, the replicate number, where FASTQ1 is, where FASTQ2 is. It has to be exactly perfect and in the right order, but then the, when it gets to this line, it's going to say, okay, I'm going to go look at that sheet. I'm going to make sure I can find where those FASTQ files are. And then... Um, we're also telling it where the reads are. It seems redundant, but it's required. Um, this flag reads, again, in the documentation, it'll tell you, you know, you have to do this. And so this is the file path to where they are. And they all start with a JR and a number, and then underscore read R underscore R1 or underscore R2. And so this star here is just saying it's a wild card to take anything that starts with a number, a name, whatever, and underscore R1 for read one, and underscore R2 for read two, and then that is followed by dot fastq dot gz, which all the files have. Um, so if you've downloaded the, the data um, from Amazon or the AWS cloud, you can put them in a folder, direct this path to that folder, add this star part here, 
um, and you're good to go. I should mention an, a common error that can happen in this shell script is if there's a space after that hash line, it'll it won't it'll stop on that line um, and have an error. So you can check your thing by just going, seeing if I hit to the right, it goes to the next line, so there's nothing after it. Sometimes you just accidentally hit that space bar, um, and that's a problem. And it does need a space before that line. It's saying this is the end of this line. This command, go to the next one. Okay, so after that, we need a genome. <laughs> we have a bunch of sequencing reads, and we need to know what to align it to. This is super important. If you don't remember what genome you used, each genome version shifts and you could get totally wacky results if you don't keep track of it. Um, I'm hosting this version of the mouse genome. For this one, I'll have a human um, genome version. You can get these for free, but just because it's so important, I'm going to make sure we all are using the exact same genome. Otherwise, if you're doing this at home, and you, you might have your reads shifted a million base pairs over because the genome has increased by the size of a million base pairs. Very important to remember what version of the genome you use. Similarly, this dash GTF line here is saying what annotation of the genome are you using? This is also critical. You need to have a matching version of where the genes are to which version of the genome um, you're using. And there's many versions the downside of always using the newest one is some of the resources we're going to go use might not have those features in them yet because every time there's a new genome, all that existing data has to be re-imported and aligned um, based on those shifts, and that's a lot of work. So we're going to use a genome that's very stable, annotation is very stable, we've done a lot of research on it already, and again for this first run we're doing the mouse stem cell time course of exposure to docs. Okay. Next line here is we're saying what do you want? How do you want to align the reads to the genome? We're just adding this because we like salmon. Um, there's a link down here to more about salmon and why it's so awesome. Um, but uh, the NF Core um, pipeline can have a bunch. Of, you can use a bunch of different ones. I can't remember what the default is, uh, but I like to specify that I would like to use salmon. Um, this is the flag on the documentation. And then we also need to tell Nextflow what type of annotation we're using because each RefSeq, gen code, they all use a little bit different syntax and we're using the gen code, which is a consortium that is annotating where genes are in genomes um, and gives the free resources of this GTF file um, to us. You can see it says gen code here. Um, and that uh, consortium has great annotations, and so we're just telling Nextflow, well, like, hey, look, we're providing you with the gen code version. And then, of course, we want an email if something goes wrong or if it finishes. There's a fun thing about uh, this NF Core pipeline is it'll give you some adjective in a scientist's name, like Glorious McClintock or something. It's kind of fun to see what kind of jobs you get, and if it gives an error and you resume it, you get a new name. Um, so uh, it's fun to see. It's a bonus of getting an error is you get you know a fun funny name to watch. Um, and then second to last, we are just saying in C. Um, now we've sort of invoked another language, saying look at the config file in order to speak with Nextflow um, there. And then finally the date of when it finished um, running. And um, that's just some sort of bookkeeping here. Okay, so after this, I'm gonna make a short little video after this just to put it all together. These last three videos are just more of like, what is each file going into this, running this pipeline? But you've seen a config one, a sample sheet, and this shell script. Those are the three um, files you need, plus exactly where your FASTQs are, but that will also be in your sample sheet and shell script. Um, so we may, if you copy and paste all this, which is the same thing as down here in sort of just a more clean format, but you can nano that into the folder you're going to run the pipeline. And then as soon as you have that file and call it whatever you want, um, you need to change the modifications to make it executable. That's just simply chmod, change modifications, um, uh, u plus x, and then the file name .sh. After that, it will be executable, and we can do run 
don't do it yet. <laughs> uh, we just want to do a couple things to, to, to get in order. I'm so excited because in the next video, you are going to do RNA seq and get a bunch of data, and it's going to be awesome. So let's get to the next video, a short one, uh, to run the pipeline and check out what it's doing. And just as a preview, this is what it's going to look like. Is look at all these things happening here. And then I can go. It's Friday today. Uh, we'll finish that video and I'll go away for the weekend and it will be done when I get back on Monday. Okay, we'll see you in the next video.